call the meeting to order. All right, so I'm going to call the meeting to order uh, just so everybody knows the uh, meeting is being recorded. Um, Ann, Jim's not on there, is he? All right, so we'll just we'll wait for him to join us when he's able to. All right, so uh, first thing on the agenda, we have uh, two sets of minutes. We have the public minutes for February 8th and the public for February 10th. I'm looking for a motion to accept those. So moved. Second. All right, the motion in the second. Are there any uh, corrections? Uh, just oh. my motion for when we, when I move to approve it that in the event of a positive COVID-19 case, just to say the district would own, it says district, and I think it's supposed to say only at the affected school. Okay. We'll go so that was it. All right. Anybody else have anything? No. All right. And the only thing that I had was on the minutes of February 10th uh, when I was talking about the um, uh, stuff from October. Um, you know, it should be the way it reads. It looks like that was my work that was presented. So I just want to note that that was um, Holly's stuff that she had presented on, in October with the trigger number stuff. And that's all I have. Jim, did you have anything on the minutes? No, I don't have anything. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second. We have the edits. Uh, so all those in favor of, of accepting those two groups of minutes as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, so we are uh, let's go on to setting up graduation date information from senior class representatives. That's my fault. So uh, each year, and I think it's usually in March, we set the graduation date. We wait till snow days. Uh, the senior class, I understand, is proposing uh, June 12th, which is a Saturday. Uh, they will have had their, as I'm told, I haven't counted the days uh, personally, but I'm told they will have the 175 days that they need in order to meet that requirement. So they would need the board's approval. And I think we have two folks that might want to speak to that um, tonight. Um, Whoever wants to go first, <laughs> we'll leave it up to you. I think, I think they want to talk about graduation itself, not setting the date. Um, so, okay, you want to set the date and talk about graduation? That's what I, yeah. Are you guys cool with that? Yeah. All right, so is everybody good with, I mean, does anyone have any concerns, problems, questions, anything with June 12th? All right, so I need a motion to accept June 12th as the graduation date. I'll make a motion. Second. All right, motion in the second. I'm going to put it in the calendar right now. Um, any discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, let's so we've got June 12th. Let's put that in there. What would you ladies like to talk to us about as far as um, graduation? Um, so for graduation and like class day, we were kind of hoping to have it be normal. Um, so um, we want to, so for class day, for example, if we can't have everybody in the gym because of COVID, we were thinking maybe it would be a good idea to just limit it to high school. And if that didn't work, then have it just be the seniors and our family members there. And then for graduation, we were thinking it could be where it normally is and then just have pods with family members in it and limit each student to a certain amount of family members. And yeah. Okay. I disagree with everything she said. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, Wayne, what did we determine? What's it like 136 or so in the one gym? It's, 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 with it's with one, six. 135 in, in the south, socially distant, and another 20 up on stage. So All right. 150, let's see. 130. 150. Julia? But if we went as pods, as family pods, if people came, like both parents, they wouldn't have to take B6. Right. I'm think, I was thinking, kind of thinking about class day. I should just Right. I'm in, in a gym. Day. Like, I'm, yeah. but still, in the, that, I'm asking, is that with everybody six feet apart? That's with everybody That's with six, everyone six feet apart. So, like, a set of parents would take up 
would be two and then six feet away would be another mm -hmm. right so it would be more than that mm -hmm. if families could be in pods but mm -hmm. and how many students would there normally be like on a normal well normally class day is not very well attended by mm -hmm. the families in public because people work yep. so i think it would require a lot of rsvp so yep. we know who to expect and how to arrange you know the seating and whether or not high school students would all would come or it would be family and kids would really want to see the seniors. Mm -hmm. So I think we could orchestrate it in the gym. I think it could be done. And this class has been talking about normal for too long. No, I mean, we all, we all yeah, have. We all have. We so all have. I think the, the best we can offer you is that we could orchestrate it, but it may have to require, like I said, an RSVP well ahead of time. So we know exactly who to expect. And class day, of course, we usually have guests who come in and do some of the presentations. Yep. We may limit that. It depending, you know, if the person feels comfortable, have one person on the stage at the time instead of all of us sitting there. So I, I think I think we could do it logistically. Okay. Yeah. Anybody? Holly? And so so when we determine that the one thirty five when we were talking about like district meeting, right? That yeah. Does that, I don't remember, did that include having the bleachers out and people sitting? No, that was okay, just people on chairs. All right. Yeah. Okay, because that's that's what I was going to say. Is yeah. It makes, gives you more room if you put yeah. the bleachers in, so that we already thought of that. Okay. So plus the stage. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I mean, it's going to take a lot of planning on yeah. all of your part, but I think as long as the time is put in and we know who's going, sounds like it should work. Okay. Um, Wayne, so if the uh, it sounds like the board is generally in agreement with kind of the plan, and maybe in April we could bring something a little more definitive. Maybe we have a waiting list. Uh, by then we can determine the pods uh, and and how that would uh, allow us maybe some more room, so we could have a little more information. I think though the guidance that I'm hearing from the board is we want to get it closer to normal, but there will be obviously. Yep. Some I, I mean, I'm. It, I'm going to speak for myself. I'm in favor of have, doing it as close to normal as we can. Obviously, um, we need to keep safety in mind. Um, you know, if we're doing pods, pods should be distant from each other, but, you know, pods might be able to get a few more people in there. Um, I mean, do you need a motion from us or do you need just I, I think general it, as long as you have the kind of the guidance that I'm hearing and then we'll come with a plan that would okay. hopefully be more definitive and you could then move it. So that we have something in the minutes in April. All right, I think April would work, right? No Is reason we couldn't. Time? Well, maybe this maybe particular day. senior maybe. class, especially yeah. with the president and vice president, who are very organized, I think it will work. I mean, you've kept your class together this far. You had we have good officer meetings. And I think the I think the family support is there as well. So I think I think it's just a win-win. Right. And if it gives you guys, I mean, obviously you'll need time to figure out, you know what parents what family members yeah. would want to come so that would help you kind of generate the yeah. guest list right and your april's okay you want to push it out till may i mean i was just going to ask why do we need the information as early as april because probably they're not going to have yeah. like numbers in our sweet peas yeah. a much better picture by may i would yeah, say i mean and i'm fine with may i mean i want to i want to give you guys as much time i don't want you to feel rushed right. and then come with something and then later on be like oh we should have done this we should have done that you know what i mean so mm -hmm. i want to make sure to give you guys enough time so i know me personally it sounds like Julia, i'm fine with may oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think may would okay. be good okay so is everybody good with that yeah yep. all right all right thank you yeah thank you, thank you very you. much you are well, welcome to you stay graduation, though. um prom. oh yeah well, the class. So this was just last day, right? I that was. Oh, that's right. You guys don't. So, is graduate? Are we gonna like do, kind of do the same thing with the graduation? Look at. I think we will try to work for family pods outside in front of the um, stage by the gazebo if we can, uh -huh. and then the backup plan always is a rain date yeah, inside right. the gym. That right. means go well, back to what we did for class day. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, I think I think we just have to be ready. For either one and, and recognizing that we want to keep everybody safe. And and you'll like if so you can bring that to us in May yeah, also, sure. and that we may have an idea. Because you probably want to figure that if there's a rain date, um, there might be a limit on how many family can be. Oh, yeah, that's so how it is normally. Right. Right. Yeah, right. So normally. But thank you for setting the date because yeah. now they can get their invitations ordered right. and ready, yeah. and that will really help with planning. Okay. 
All right, perfect. Yeah, and, and other schools did, a uh, couple other schools did the pods for graduation. Yeah. So, you know, there's like you, other schools kind of look at and see what they, how they did it or didn't do it or, you know, whatever. Okay. Yeah, that one, several schools did the pod thing. So. Okay. Does that take care of the senior class stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. The ladies are welcome to stay if you want, but you, you don't to have to. Do you want to turn this off? Well, um, you can give it to Mr. Bogey. And good luck tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Excellent. ladies. Have a great day. Um, all right, so now we are moving on to proposal right. concerning prom and junior class representatives. So, so Kaylin, Megan Roberts is here. Um, hey, Kaylin, um, can you unmute? And there she is. There she is. Um, Ms. Conway or Ms. Lucier, do you guys want to read the proposal? <laughs> the board does have yeah, we have, yeah, we have it. it. Yeah, the board has a copy of your proposal. Is there anything you want to add to what was what was submitted with the board packet with the written proposal? Um nothing much really. We have prices down if you guys need to know that. But we have 35 for singles and then 50s for couple. Right. Is there any like questions or anything? Does anyone have any questions? No. It was very, it looks very well. It was pretty good. It, it was pretty well done. It was a pretty mm -hmm. well done presentation. Yep. And do you need a motion on that, Wayne? Yes, it would be great because it's it's spelled out, I think, well here and be it okay to approve it. Their Does plan as as written. Does anyone want to make that motion? Is this and I could be wrong, but there. what's the date of the um the head golf tournament? Same day. Same day, but in the morning. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm able to share some resources. Yeah. I'll make the motion to approve that. Okay. All right, motion in a second to accept the proposal for uh the junior class prom. Um any further discussion? Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Motion carries. You guys are good to go. All right. So then the next up is a proposal for Heart and Soul, Karen Hammond, Hinsdale Parks and Recreation. Hey, guys. Hi, Karen. Hi. Congratulations to Holly and Kayla. Thank you. You, you guys probably said that off mic earlier, but congrats. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, I'll try to do this as concisely as I can. I do have notes, but for those of you who know they me. Have, they have your email. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'm waiting uh, for clarification on as far as heart and soul to high school, I, I was told that, because I did ask specifically if ninth graders could participate this year, usually it's just grades six to eight, but obviously last year being what it was, um, New Hampshire Council has agreed to go ahead and let ninth graders do the program this year. I believe it's just the ones that couldn't finish last year, but that's the only thing I'm just waiting to hear back on. Um, and I, I don't know if you guys are all aware up to speed um, or if, <clears throat> excuse me, if, if Joe uh, Bogio filled you in, but um, heart, uh, sorry, Girls on the Run won't happen at the elementary school. Um, just, you know, there's just, that's a that's a certainly an age group that does not do well remotely, and the coaches just aren't on board yet. But um, the hope is that if we stay with the New Hampshire Council, that we can have a fall season there. Um, and I'll see how it goes if you guys decide to go ahead and approve it for Heart and Soul this year at the middle school. Um, you know, maybe see if we can do a fall season there as well. But first things first. Does anyone have any questions for Karen, Kayla? I just wanted to ask, so for Girls on the Run, would they be willing to do it in person? Or is there a possibility, is it just the coaches? Because I've coached before and could, I would be willing to do it this year. Obviously, if we went remote, I don't think we would probably want to try and continue remotely. But I think if we could do in person with them, it would be beneficial this year, especially. Oh yeah, I, I hear you on the psychosocial, you know, standpoint and everything. But 
Yeah, primarily with the coaches, I think it just with the risk of going remote at any given time, um, they, they all feel like and the ones that have gotten back to me, which has been uh, three or four of them have said, you know, they're, they're really not up for it this spring. It's just, it's too risky um, with the, you know, possibility of flipping back and forth. Um, so, you know, I think they're all willing to coach again, but, you know, I, I presume once everyone's been vaccinated and, you know, once things can be more consistently in person for, for those at the elementary school. Questions for Karen? Nothing else? No. All right, so um, Wayne, how would this motion need to be worded? Just uh, to approve uh, Heart and Soul uh, to use facilities and to be part of our program for the spring. Okay. All right. Does anyone want to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Right. Motion in a second to uh, approve Heart and Soul. Um, any further discussion? Should we Clarify say? Um, uh, Holly was second. Should we include girls on the run just in case things change between now and when it starts? I don't know. I mean, the season starts April, the week of April 5th. So that's, I don't know. It, it seems like with, with, without enough coaches and I, I'm appreciate that you're willing to Kayla, but I, you know, you can't do that group alone. No, not at all. <laughs> You know, so um, I just, I think it would be a bit tight of a time frame. I think, you know, I think your team side, your interest might be huge, right. but then I think just to have to flip, you know, possibly, it, it's very possible still um, to remote. I just, I don't know that it's, and I hate to say not worth it, but it just seems like it would be a lot of preparation um, for something that just might have to be like everyone being refunded when you go remote. and. I just, I don't, I don't see it being as feasible. And I know Joe felt the same way as far as, you know, if I don't have coaches, you know, we really can't, can't support it. But everyone was in agreement that fall sounded like a wonderful idea. And, you know, for those that were with us back in 2013, when we had that first trial season in the fall, it was, it was fantastic. And the 5k was right on Halloween. So they got to run in costumes and things like that. So that's kind of a nice thing um, to look forward to. But um, as far as the middle school goes, I, I did want to put it out there. I, I know I'm not an employee, um, but I have coached every season, um, either Girls on the Run or Heart and Soul since it's come to Hinsdale. I was one of the first coaches. Um, and because I work in healthcare, I am fully vaccinated um, now. So um, you know, we would try to have it. I know um, Ann Freetag felt like, you know, preferably outdoors as much as possible. That's something we always try to do anyways, but I would be pushing that a little bit more, you know, obviously under these circumstances. Right. Holly? Um, Kayla, if you, if you, I see what your question was. If we want to add it to the motion, and I would be willing to second if you want to change your motion as the board, you know, that if that we also would approve girls on the run, if you know, Karen and Joe or whomever, you know, circumstances change and it's they, they think it's feasible. That way they don't have to worry about coming back to us. Yeah. I think that's what you're going for. Yeah. Well, right? and we are looking at changing the policy. So I think when they see the, if we update the policy, it might make people feel a little <clears throat> differently about remote. So I think, yeah, if we could just include it. You, and... you could amend the motion to include both. And um, that way, if it is feasible and Karen wants to do what she can, but, but think... if she um, say it's not feasible, then there's no that. obligation to yeah. do it. Okay. And that way. Yeah, you're, I know. You're... I know I personally can't coach girls in the run as well, just with my work obligations also. But, you know, Sarah Donahue is pretty much the head coach at the elementary school of girls in the run. So. You know, I, I think she would be a great one to reach out to if the policies do change um, is, you know, going forward for, for them. Yeah, so we'll so amend wanna... the motion just in case so they don't have to come they back to if they back. do yeah. want to do amend it. Amend the second? Yep. All right, so we have the amended motion and the amended second. Is there any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, you're good to go, Karen. Thank you very much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Have a great one. Thanks. Thanks.
All right, so next we have a review of the letter in support of the School Street grant. Um, so I'll speak to that. Uh, so Jill is uh, going for the School Street uh, grant again. Um, that's for the renovation project that, you know, for out front that she presented you know, a couple of years ago. She's been applying for a couple of different types of grants. Um, so it was TAP one year, it was CMAC another year, now it's TAP grant again. Um, so I included, I, I modified the last letter that we signed to update it. Um, it, you guys should have that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'd be just seeing if you guys wanted to still support the town with a letter of support to add to Jill's grant application. Oh, and yes. if you guys are good with it, then I will entertain a motion. So moved. I'll second. Motion and second for the chair to sign the uh, letter of support for the uh, School Street grant. Uh, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, I will sign that and get that to Jill. Um, so then we have a proposal concerning spring sports. And so that is Sam. Well, unless, unless you had a. Well, I, I just, <laughs> uh, you know, this is certainly preliminary, but we would need the authorization to move forward with spring sports. We don't have a schedule yet to propose to you because some of that's still in development. But before we get everybody together, uh, you know, given the, that it's outside, um, you know, certainly some of the issues that we had with winter sports don't exist, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that we have the go ahead before we start getting everyone together, which will happen fairly soon. If weather like today continues, we'll be actually be out on the fields and you know, much sooner than we might have thought a week ago. Mm -hmm. So Sam, do you want to speak to your where you are right now in, in, the, in the process? So I, I did talk to uh, uh, a coach that the division four rep on the baseball committee. Um, I talked to him this evening. Uh, they had a meeting, but there's obviously a lot to discuss. Um, so they are meeting again on March 15th to discuss the protocols that they are going to propose to the NHIAA. Um, so I need to get back on the agenda in April. Um, but it's going to be quick because our first game is supposed to start the 18th. And I think their meeting is like the 13th or something like Four. that. So I just want to, um, and we were allowed to start inside. So I wanted to get approval to get the baseball and softball people inside. Um, we will wear masks um, while inside. Um, I'm not sure what the NHIA is going to propose um, moving forward, um, but we'll follow the same protocols we did for basketball with masks inside. Uh, we'll sanitize every baseball and softball we use the entire time we are playing. Um, a lot of our kids share helmets and bats. We'll make sure those sanitized in between every single use. Um, but I would really like to get them going. A lot of them haven't played in almost two years. Um, if you've played baseball or softball, you know you've got to build up arm strength, and some of them haven't done that. Uh, and, and prevent injuries as well. So uh, just looking to try and start in about two weeks or so uh, inside until we can get outside and I can get you that other proposal later in April. Uh, what it sounds like we are going to do uh, is continue with the regions. So we are going to continue playing the same schools we're going to play, um, minus uh, Keene, we're going to play their JV team, not their varsity team. Um, but it's going to be the same kind of schedule that you're going to see the hour and a half until the playoff time and then it's the open tournament. Um, but that's just the preliminary stuff that they're going over right now. Like I said, they're supposed to meet again on the 15th and, and come up with more protocols. I will say that I did coach um, the summer. I coached over in Brattleboro all summer long, their weekend team. Um, and we, we made it through the entire summer without getting shut down, no cases. Um, so it's definitely a poss possible uh, to do. Um, and, and I think it's, I guess if they, Wayne said we're back outside, we're not inside, we're not dealing with the inside stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely can be done. We did it all summer long. Anyone have any questions for Sam? What was the first game, April? What was it? Uh, I think it's going to be April 18th. Off, 18, okay. That's just off the top of my head. I'm not 100% okay. certain of that. No, I was just jotting the dates down and I missed that one. That's all. Anything else for Sam? Nope. So, Wayne, what do you need us to do? Well, us? If, it's a, if the board would like to move to authorize spring sports with the understanding that in April we'll bring a more kind of definitive plan like a written uh, to you. 
Um, but that way we can get the kids and, and get the coaches linked. And, you know, my hope is we'll be outside every opportunity we'll be outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, given that we had a tough uh, late winter, maybe we'll have a great early spring. Okay. Uh, Did anyone want to want to make that motion? Yes, I'll make the motion to support that. Uh, can I second since my kid plays for you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll second. <laughs> All right, motion and a second to um, go ahead with spring sports uh, for the discussion. I All have a question, Sean. Sure, go ahead. Um, does that mean that I could start trying to make a schedule? I would say, I need a to... no, I would say. Yes, right. That's yeah. we, because we want to do everything. Saying, go do. ahead. Okay. Yeah, up yeah, until the next board. So, I want to get the answer for it. Yeah. Get booked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And we're saying they're good to start inside as long as they're following the same protocols. As long as they're, as long as they're, as they're following the guidelines. Okay. And yep. Okay. For the discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Good to go, Sam. All right, so next up is the uh, ad for the yearbook. Um, so normally we do a half page ad in the yearbook for um, uh, for the graduating class. Um, and I, yep, yep, there's a copy of the past. That's, that's I'm getting that. Okay. So there's a copy of the past ad. Um, and just for laughs, I did a couple of drafts of potential different ads um, that I made copies of and put on the table for everybody. Um, so if you want to go with one of those, there's four, I, I did four draft half page ads, um, each with a different layout and then each with a different message. Um, so we can, if you like them and you want to go with one of those, we can mix and match the designs with the messages. There's no problem. And the other thing that I wanted to ask the board um, to consider would be to do a second ad this year, um, which would be a quarter page ad thanking the teachers mm -hmm. uh, well, and staff, the teachers and staff for everything they've done this year has been a really hard year. Um, so that would be the half page ad color is 175. The quarter page would be an additional hundred that we don't usually spend, but it is only a hundred dollars. So, um, and the same thing with the quarter page ad, um, I did four different designs with four different messages and we can mix them. If you wanted to go with one of these, we can mix and match the messages with the designs. So it's up to you. I gave you guys all the different things there. So I like the first one. I like the first one for the half page. I like the wishing you a bright future. Okay. Um, I was thinking, I think it costs. I think that looks great. You did a fabulous job on all these. But my you. my first blush, that's the one that really caught my eye. Jim, did you have a preference? Uh, no. Holly? No, um, so, but my only suggestion with the quarter page is yep. that some two of them only reference teacher. Yeah, I would make yeah, sure. So just make so, sure. So, what I, so what I would do is whenever, if we are going with uh, design one, um, I'm going to go through, I'm going to do this off with Jessica uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make sure the readability is good. I'm going to get her a higher um, resolution image than what you guys have here. Um, and I will do the same thing with the teacher message. And then I will make sure that it reads correctly. Yeah, well. yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. So um, as far as the design for the um I like the, the message ad. on this one. Which, you, probably which one do you want for the class at? The first oh, one. Oh yeah, the first one, right? Yeah. yeah that one's the first one. Yeah, I think that that first pop. one pops me. All right. Yeah. So we'll do that. And then for the quarter ad, Julie, you like the blue one? I like the I like the verbiage. I like the message. Yes. You like the message on the blue one and the design? Or yeah, the I think message? it looks great. I think it looks great, but oh see, I like the message of four, but I like the design of two. So I like the message and design of four. <laughs> <laughs> I did but like I how thank you was so prominent, but the colors are boring. Okay. <laughs> Paul, you have a preference? I'm just looking at all those. Jim? I have no preference. Okay. So wait, so I just I like this how it says yeah you having faith in the kids and their abilities and yep. having the skills to get them where they needed to go I like that message 
I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I like, I, I agree with, I like that message better than four, because four yeah. references graduation day, yeah. and for the, thank you to the staff, it's like for the whole year kind of thing. Uh -huh. So, and I don't, but either, I mean, any design but three, I don't care for three. Okay. But yeah, so whatever design, but I agree, I like number two's message. Yeah. Can we add the quote though? I really love the quote. Well, there's only so on much which one? Well, we could, uh, maybe we could you tell she's a teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love that quote. You can tell she's a teacher because she loves that quote. Mm -hmm. It is a great quote. I just think I love the message of how they were there for the kids in this difficult year, which is what two really speaks to. You have a right hand corner for me. You could That's maybe good. start it at thank you and then add the quote. So I can pro I can I can modify if everyone likes the design of two mm -hmm. and everyone likes the message of two. Mm -hmm. And would everyone be fine if I just modified that a little bit and added the quote from four? I have to write that down. Design. I don't know how you fit that and still be able to read it though. I might have to change the font a little bit. Yeah. And or message. you could get rid of these little scrollies at the that's top. That's what I yes. was just thinking and that's what I'm too. If you get rid of these. I could do something that's a little bit less. Yeah, if you get rid of this scroll, you could move yep. everything up and probably have room for it. Yep. And I can find like a, a more linear design element there that would still frame the whole thing. So yeah, that's, that's no, I love, enough. right. Yeah. Maybe just a symbol yep. like little banner. Yeah, no, that looks great. Thank you for doing that. That I know these are that's a lot of work, but it looks great. Yeah, you still have a couple days before her deadline, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can get it all done to work tomorrow. I mean, this yeah. is the type of stuff I like to do to relax, believe it or not, <laughs> so. Uh, it was, it was I needed to relax. All right, so then I would be looking for a motion to um, approve the uh, half page ad for the class of 2021 and the quarter page ad uh, for the teachers and staff. I'll make that motion. Okay. All right, motion in a second. Any further discussion or any discussion at all? Thank you. All, right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, you just have to, I just know because I've done this before, make sure Ann and Tom know so they can get just the money. Yep. And do no, all she that. has to submit the ad for me. She has to just her submit the ad. Okay. I'll, I'll, um, when I send just the ads, I will uh, remind her to do that. Okay. All right. Now, so the yearbook ad is done. Um, so on the agenda, the COVID discussions next, does anyone mind if I just move the final reading of those policies up one and so we just can get them out of the way? That's fine. Okay. All right. So we have the final reading of policy EBDB, JLCH, and JICI. And so I'm looking for a motion to accept those as a final reading. I'll make that motion. Second. All right, motion in a second to accept those policies as final reading. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Right, so we're all set. All right, so the COVID discussion. So Wayne, I'm sure you're gonna wanna kick us off on that. Okay. So as you'll recall at our last board meeting, uh, we talked about the protocols, the determination uh, for closing school um, in Hinsdale. And, and uh, we spoke to the time that had passed from the initial discussion in August uh, where we spent a lot of time really deep diving into what we felt would be the best option uh, for making our keeping our students and staff safe. We agreed that much has changed relative to our knowledge of how transmission occurs and risk. Uh, so uh, you asked me to put together a task force to come up with recommendations that better reflected the kind of the best practice, best thinking uh in 2021 rather than 2020. Uh, so got together with the, the nurses uh joe ann and diorio myself and kind of looked at the cdc health and human service guidance and um, found that they were recommending that we looked at two metrics uh, one was the number of cases in a given location and the other was the positivity um, of a test. So if 100 people were tested and 10 people tested positive, you had a 10%, um, which was deemed to be high. So we just had a hard time kind of coming up with the location that we felt best fit 
Uh, Hinsdale is a, you know, with about 4,000 people. We didn't, we felt the anomalies uh, were too great to, to have that uh, as our only metric around number of cases or positivity rating. So we looked at Cheshire County and many of our staff members, even though they work in Hinsdale, live in other communities in Cheshire County. So we decided that would probably be our best. Uh, the community dash dashboard is updated daily and we could easily send that link. People could sort of see things coming if we were to use that. So we, we recommended to the administrators in another meeting uh, last week that we proposed to you that we use those two means to determine uh, whether we close school. Uh, we also agreed that if a case occurred in a classroom at the elementary school, we would close for the maximum amount of time. And as we had included the governor order number 85, you know that's mm -hmm. two days. So close two days, we would do the deep cleaning. We would make sure we had time for the contact tracing. Uh, and, and Joe felt that one grade would do, a, but there may be other circumstances and that would be part of contact tracing. And within the two days, they could determine that. You know, maybe four kids from one class, three from another. Uh, given the students move around so much in the middle high school, we determined that if somebody tested positive, determined to be positive in the middle high, we just close it for two days and do the same sort of thing we would do at the elementary school. So we're proposing that we assume that plan, we communicate that to our parents. Uh, we feel it better fits. And certainly now with the governor's order, he sort of trumped our <laughs> determination of number of days uh, that we could probably, we feel we could get through the rest of the year. If you look at Cheshire County, we're right in between substantial and high and rounds a number of cases. Most of that has to do with the Keene State College. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason we're so low. We're 2.5, 2, I mean, we've been up to 3.6 last, you know, recently, but we're not, we're much, we're very much below 10%. And I don't see, 10% likely, but as you know, no one's going to make an absolute prediction that they'll uh, defend to the death because things change dramatically and with variants, who knows? So, but right now we think this is a good plan. It's better than the plan we had. I think we can communicate to parents. I think our families will appreciate it. And we know the hardship that a lot of our families are, are in right now as they try to manage the turnarounds and and we, at the same time you know we want to keep students and staff safe so that's our proposal and obviously we can change it every time we meet if we'd like but we feel it better reflects probably the new reality and, and if you're okay with it and we've got questions i don't know if we have elise or jan on okay but obviously their guidance was the first and foremost <laughs> in regards to thinking this through questions for wayne yeah, I have one question that we answer. Just about, because um, <clears throat> I know that some when other people have been using similar to this, and they look at the rolling seven day average, um, and it's like, you know, it's a link to the, I don't know if it's Health and Human Services or whatever. So when you say looking at the last 10 days, is that going to be an everyday thing you look, or seven days, you look back set the previous seven days, like every day you're going to look? And yeah, then, but you'd okay. be able to see it coming. Uh, so, you know, if we had 10 cases three days in a row, okay, we got 30 cases as far as a seven day, even if we had no cases, I mean, people could see and we could help alert, okay, there's a substantial transmission or a high transmission level and we're getting close to whatever. So it'd have to be both. It'd have to be fit them as CDC recommends, it'd have to fit the metric in regards to numbers, but also in percentage of positive tests. And then like, so you're looking at it every day. So then say one day you're like, okay, it just hit it. We go remote that next, next, how many days? So if, if we were close to that seven day number mm -hmm. and close to that seven day positivity rate, we would have to alert our parents. So the least they could see it coming, mm -hmm. yeah. make plans. And then if it hit that morning, we would have to uh, make plans for the next day. For the next day, oh, okay, okay. And, um, so I had another one and it told me it just stuck my head. Oh, um, so the the other metrics from the state that we had looked at before was it also had a component with staffing and absenteeism. Yeah. Um, so that's always like on the back burner kind of thing. Yeah. It doesn't sound like that's in this plan. That's but not in the plan, but the governor's it. order in 85, it is, and that mandates so that 
uh, trumps anything that we want to do. Uh, that would be a situation where we would have to contact the Department of Ed, uh, let them know that you know, we've got an outbreak in staff, we can't staff the building, and then we would not be under the two-day mandate. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be under the got to get staff here before we open mandate. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> you have such a, yeah. go ahead, shoot. Um, so first I wanted to clarify, so it would have to be the case numbers and the positivity rate yeah. and doing all of this kind of, are we going to keep in mind that if the outbreak, so the president at Keene State College just sent out an email basically telling students, get it together or we're not going to stay in person. Um, so if the outbreak is just at Keene State, are we going to still close if we can see very clearly that it's yeah. directly related to Keene State College, a nursing home, right. the prison? You know, there are a lot of different spaces right. an outbreak could occur that's contained. So we did talk about that, and we do have a lot of student teachers, and we have method students from Keene State. And we think that the fact that if you've got four, 3,000 kids now at Keene State, and maybe you have 30 kids test positive, but as a percentage, you're still within the realm. So the rest of the Cheshire County, 77,000 people would mitigate that number as far as it, the influence. So that was my original thinking that if we have an outbreak at Keene State doesn't mean that, but given that the interplay with students and method students and staff and teachers that go to classes at Keene State, it's probably better to stick with this. I mean, we go out for a couple of days and between now and April and the board says, you know what, or you could call an emergency meeting and 24 hour notice and we could change the plan. But I think to get into those anomaly groups, um, I think would create more confusion. The dashboard's simple. You hit a button, you can link it, you know, so it's on your, de your desktop if you want. And you can in the morning say, hey, or what's the trend and see it. Um, and the other thing was, so in the write-up you did, it said that if we reach those levels uh, during the, we close both schools for the two days to do deep cleaning and to allow our staff to implement stricter protocols. Yeah. So what would be the stricter protocols? Well, we might limit the, the bubble. Uh, so we may not, um, there may not be as many options for uh, students to meet, meet with other students other than the four to six that they may be, you know, in the, within six feet during a given day. So that would be um, kind of that plan if we needed to an emergency plan to, if we hit that number. Okay. And then I, so for the end of it, it would be the elementary school. Would there be any way to do just the middle school and then just the high school? Is there too much intermingling? <clears throat> we, we have a lot of shared spaces. So for example, the cafeteria, one lunch group will be ninth graders. We clean. The next lunch group is seventh graders. Okay. We clean. The next lunch group is 10th graders and the other kids are in classrooms. So we do have those shared spaces and we are cleaning. And as you mentioned, the stricter cleaning would probably be even more, you know, vengeful, get right in there and really scrub. So it does take time to do that. But I think realistically, those kids are all over the building. They're, they're not in contact and, and we're, we are nagging them a lot, mm -hmm. but um, we're getting pretty relaxed. So I know, right. my fingers crossed. And you all have teachers who teach high school and middle school. Oh yeah, so that's true. Yeah. I didn't think yeah, about that. We do. That's true. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, uh, yes, my last question was, so looking at, what was it? The emergency order 64, it states that any special education in-person services still need to be provided in person, even when we go remote. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there and see if there was a plan to make that happen. So we have, we have very few, but we do have a few. And the plan is for two days to find other ways to provide that, but there may be a couple that we can't do that with, but that would be individual IEP determination. Okay, would so be, I just wanted to make sure that was yeah. kind of at the forefront because it's very specific that if they are supposed to be in person, they will remain in person, so. Yeah. 
that was it for me. Okay. Julia, anything? I think it looks great. Jim? Um, but Holly, anything else? Then? I'm good. All right, so then we're looking for a motion to accept the new plan as presented. I will make that motion. Second. Um, all right, any motion from second? Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Julia, would you be? Uh, I just, I was, did you I see how my head turned towards you? Yes, yes and like, I have my notes here. Don't forget to talk to Julia. I'm like, I'm, I'm waiting after the vocals. I'm like, let me ask you going to talk to me next. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Do you want me to sign this with plan I would love that. Yes, thank you. All right. Um, and after uh, Julia has it done up and we get it all going, um, can you help with Facebook? Yep. All right. And then we'll use the normal process to get it out and the NPD her yep. all of this stuff like that. I think when we're talking to parents too, so this was kind of hard to follow all of the numbers. Oh yeah, my head ahead. kind of spun off yep. for a minute. So let's try and make that a little. Yeah, I'll definitely simplify it as much as possible. I mean, for us, it was appropriate to have such a technical right. presentation. Right. But for the parents, I mean, I'm not even sure we need it. We just say we will be closely monitoring. We will be using right. these right. two things. We will closely monitor based on CDC recommendations. This is how I don't even think we need to get into all of the yeah, technical stuff. Right. Make it very simple and easy to understand and just tell them what we're following. Okay. Perfect. Oh, Ann? I Sorry. just want, I did a little research today and I just, I think it's important to note that we've been in school for 113 days. We only had 35 remote days, um, 35 at the high, at the elementary school and 34 at the high school. So we've been in school 75 days at a, um, the high school and 70, 75 days at the high, middle, elementary school <laughs> and, and 76 days at the middle high school. Okay, thank you. Those are good numbers. Yeah. Okay. That's good numbers. That's a big accomplishment. Big mm -hmm. kudos to the entire staff and administration. That's impressive. it's not without work. That's, That's sure. very impressive. Right. Yeah. Holly had another question. I said it wasn't about that. I mean, it goes with it because I skipped in there. But um, with the vaccinations for staff, may um, I have? Could we divest a little and, oh. and hit that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like Anne, who spent uh, yeah, Anne's a couple spent, of days Anne's this week, spent like all kinds of like <laughs> yeah. crazy time. Yeah. So she getting can this lined just up. tell you She's our vaccination. Staff plan which is yeah. very exciting and uh, yeah, i think i'm excited I'm, I'm surprised that we're we've it's been moved up yeah. <laughs> wow yeah. um, yeah. we Did board members email. qualify for this plan whatever it is <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> I got an email after the i can't even remember what day i'm sorry my days are really starting to melt this week um when the governor came out and said that he was moving up i think it was last monday. friday well monday was our governor's okay monday was the day yeah um, no, I think it was Friday. I don't know. So Edel Blue's thing was Monday. Okay. It was yeah. a day that ends in Y. Right. <laughs> yeah, the day that ends in Y. So we got the notice that we would be able to, um, that uh, school staff would be able to, I don't know if people can help with that. Well, people. People on the recording uh, might not be able to. Um, that we needed to get all the information um to the the greater monadnock health network um so i've been working with um patricia i think her last she's changed her last name i can't remember i've worked with her on a number of different committees i think you know her sean she did some of the farmers market stuff a little while ago um, maybe i don't i don't remember yeah. it's been a little while since i've done that <laughs> um so from the time from around noon time or 10 o'clock on, no, it was around noon time on Monday to yesterday at 2.30 when I emailed this, I know I notified 198 staff members, past, mem past personnel, uh, Keene State College students, Method students, um, all the substitutes, every single employee that we have, um, and, bus drivers <laughs> and what we had to do is get together a list of people um and there was a lot of questions we had to have their their name date of birth ethnicity i can't say that ethnicity mm -hmm. yeah race street city 
zip code, email address, cell phone, and school ID, also coaches. Um, so I was able to, I worked on this really long. We have a hundred and, um, I have it all. We had 100, 192 people were contacted. We have 17 people in the district that did not, that chose not to have the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And we have 30, seven people right now that at least have had their first shot. Wow. So we're in pretty good shape. Um, what this means, according to what we've been told so far, is that because I have provided this list, they will, they're going to be uploading it into the, I don't know if it's a DHHS system or the VAM system, using this information and they'll be able to go to Keene and they're going to stagger the appointments out, and then they'll they'll start. And I think they might start early as this weekend. Oh wow, cool! So I don't have the I haven't gotten back the official official word yet, but that's what we're looking at within probably by um, at least April vacation. We will have everybody have their second their second vaccine. Nice. Oh, oh good. That's awesome. awesome. Great. Does anyone have any questions? For yeah. So if um, if their appointment happens to be like during the school day, I know subs are, are an issue, but so we're working obviously with them because they we're going to they we're going to work with their appointment. Their appointment. And then and they and their appointments start at seven in the morning and go to seven at night. Oh, oh okay. During okay. the week, oh, cool. and then the weekends they have Saturday appointments also. That um, and what they'll do too is if. All of a sudden, they've got an excess because this happened to, to this happened to me this weekend. We got a call at three ten that said if we can get to Keene by three fifty, we can get our mm -hmm. shot. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed yeah. to be yesterday that we were supposed to get it, so we were moved up a little bit. That's cool. So uh, if that's what they'll do, if they get extra shots, then they'll keep getting them out. We've been told that these will either be the Pfizer or the Moderna shots. They will not be the Johnson and Johnson yeah. shots. Yeah. Because that's what they have in stock right now. Any other questions for Ann? No. Okay. Uh, I would like to note in the minutes and give Ann a big shout out and thank yeah, you for all the work yeah, that you. she has done. This is a big deal and wow. she has spent a boatload of time on it. So thank you very much. Thank you. With that, we're at any other business to be conducted by the board. Does anybody have anything? Oh, you're good. All right, so let's get on to our reports here. The uh, we'll start with the financial report. Good evening, folks. Mr. Chair, I'll be happy to entertain any questions on my financial report. Does anybody have any questions for Tom? No, none. Not a single one of them. Financial one. All right. Well, once more, twice. Tom, it looks like you uh, have an easy night. Thank you, folks. <laughs> we'll go back to mute. All right. All right, so let's move on to the uh, curriculum report. Is Kat on? Up there she is. Hello. Hi, Kat. Hi. So I gave you quite a bit today. <clears throat> Um, I'm wondering if it's possible to set a work session. Yes, I have that in my notes that we have to do that. So why don't, can everybody um, just grab their calendars so we can do that? Let me go back to March. All right. So I think Kat, you had originally thrown out the date of the 24th of March, um, which Holly does not have available. Um, okay. I, I don't have the 23rd or the 25th. Um, what is what, what is everyone else looking at? I don't have anything right there. Okay. Um, I am in Connecticut on Tuesdays and Wednesdays nights, except for the second week for this meeting. Tuesday and Wednesday nights. But um, I can always do a limo or I, I can make it, I can make changes. So there's obviously some flexibility, as I said, because I'm, I'm here to make sure to get to this meeting, but just need to be cognizant of. When are you thinking? 
Um, how, can everybody do the 31st, which is a Wednesday? Yep. I'll yeah. just have to remote in probably, but. And that's fine if you can do that. I can absolutely remote anytime is no problem. Okay. Right, just cool. physically being here, I can't guarantee it. Okay. This cat works for you, Wayne. Yeah. I will do whatever uh, you need me to do. All right. So do we want to say the 31st? Yep. All right. What time? Six is eight. One to six. All right. Let's do uh, the 31st at six. Will we going. do that in this room or the library? Um, what space? Well, it'll be here because if Julie's going to remote in, this is the easiest room oh, to yeah, do that in. Yep. Curriculum workshop, Wednesday, the 31st at 6. Save. All right. Everybody have that in their books? Yep. Yeah. All right. So, Kat, what did you want to do with this tonight? Did you want to? Did you want to talk anything about it tonight or did you just want to wait until the 31st? I, I assume that you would need more time to just really go through it. I know that everybody's been doing a lot of work, um, you, you know, and everybody's just exhausted with COVID. So I, I assume that people needed a little bit more time to kind of delve into it and process it a little bit. Um, I am wondering though, if you want recommendations for people to serve on like a district committee or a district council to so, help move this forward once it's adopted, or do you want to wait and what would what would you like to do on that? I know I I don't mind opinion this, but it, does anyone have any thoughts on that? Because I do have that's one of the that's one of the notes that I do have on here. Yeah, and I think we should really kind of dig into it first before, before we that would be my thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we should dig into it. And one of the things that I was concerned about, because um, obviously it's a it's a lot, and we're going to need staff buy in. And I was concerned with, you know, I was concerned with like a preset list mm -hmm. versus putting it out there to see who'd want to be. That's true. You know, yeah. you're in. Yeah. But yeah. then I'm also thinking I would really love to hear from those people. If they're interested, who we don't usually hear mm -hmm. from, who aren't yeah. usually on all of these different things, to get a different perspective. So I thought that was worthy of some conversation. But I, I, I me personally, I, I didn't necessarily want to pre-make a list. You know what I mean? I think we should do the thirty-first meeting, really dig yeah, into it, I agree. and I amongst that. ourselves, and then decide how we want to approach the committee. Mm -hmm. And I had that note. We did not discuss it, but I had that note as well. Because right. we have been making, you know, we've been appointing people to committees a lot lately. Where in the past we used to put it out. Yeah. So I think we're hearing a lot of the same voices. So yeah. yeah. Is that cool with you, Kat? That's fine. All right, cool. That's fine. All right. Um, does anyone have any general questions for Kat? Or will we it. save everything for the 31st? Yeah, I have questions, but I'll have more questions in the 30th. So it'll be better. <laughs> I don't know if it's just a quick question. Yeah. yeah, I haven't had time to go through it. Yeah. Okay, so you had some initial I have, questions. but not for tonight. I'm, I, I'm going to be able to yeah, go yeah. through it. Like, right. Yeah, so, yeah. so I'm just asking you, do you have anything for tonight? Or for no, oh, wait? I'm sorry. Right, so I'm sorry. No. Uh -uh. Right. Just wait. No, I can wait. All right, Kat, so we're going to ask you all kinds of questions on the 31st. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. All right, awesome. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a few yes. more, uh, just a couple more things. Oh, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Um, I'm looking for an approval, if if you don't mind, for that sixty-five thousand oh, dollars. That's right. Yeah. Um, for the ELA materials. So. And, and my concern related to that it has to do with the fact that I know that a lot of districts across the country are going to be using their COVID funds um, to place purchases for new instructional materials. And I would prefer, if at all possible, to get our um, order in as soon as possible. So that way our order is towards the front of that. So, so that way we can have materials for the fall. Uh, um, so what would happen if we, and that's just throwing it out there, that if we say, hey, we're going to spend $65,000 and then we yeah, don't get, to, get to the 31st and we say, eh. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, is it going to be significantly delayed, Cat, if we make that decision on the thirty-first? Because that's just a couple of weeks. I don't. I don't think so. 
I mean, we ordered the laptops ahead of time and look at how that went. So, I think, <laughs> right, I but think I don't think you should different. order any materials for a curriculum program we haven't Until approved we or even looked at yet. And, that, and that's my concern. I would agree with that. Yeah, I think that's a big span. And I understand the timing issue, but we haven't really, I haven't even read through this entire packet, let it digest it. And I hate to spend money in case there right. are a few tweaks here and there, yep. and then we're spending money right. that we didn't need to, or something different should be purchased. Right. I, and when we do curriculum, don't we usually do like kind of a, a big group decide yeah. curriculum, right? Yeah, and it's, it's a much lengthier process than that. Um, Normally, but I think a lot of what Kat's talking about it in here is kind of breaking out of the norm because we're doing something really different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you still need the I, time to. Yeah, I think that still needs to be a multiple person decision. I agree too. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable having a, okay. a curriculum. So, so then how is that? Because as you know, she points out, you know, she makes a valid point as far as getting materials. So, it's probably not going to be a huge delay for the, you know, to decide on the 31st, but now you're saying that you don't want to decide on the 31st because it can't, it also can't be something that's thrown out that that's left out hanging. Um, maybe, I don't know, have Joe and Anne or have Kat, I don't know who would be the best person, but to get some staff input and yeah. see what their input, is. I just think this needs to be, a, a lot of people need to weigh in. I see. So, okay. well, you've seen the proposal, right? I, I see this $65,000, but I don't know what the program is. Okay, so yes. There is, so both of you need yeah. to know what that is. Right, and there is um, a committee of eight staff members at the elementary school, and then also one middle school teacher on it also. Um, so it's not like a single thing. We use the thing called edreports.org. It's a nonprofit that rates programming mm -hmm. and chose two of the highly rated programs from there to kind of, otherwise you could spend forever trying to figure out what, what program might make sense. So one of them is called Wit and Wisdom and the other one's called Exp Expeditionary Learning. And those are the ones that those two committee- It does say that there has been committee work already. A committee is being formed at the HES to review, but that hasn't happened. The review, the committee's being formed, but the review hasn't happened yet. I think Kat can correct me if I'm wrong, but the first meeting is March 18th. I believe that's correct. Okay. So we're still at a, we still haven't been reviewed the program yet. So. All right. So we've had, so we're getting input for the elementary school, but we need, it's, it, we need input from Ann's building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if this is, because we want K to 12 alignment. So yeah. I think we definitely need input from both schools. Yeah. So Jillian right now, Jillian Perzan is working with the middle school ELA teachers. And when I've met with her, I haven't met with all of the ELA teachers, but uh, according to Jillian, at least the teachers are very receptive to the idea of having uh, one of these two programs because they're both K through eight programs. Um, they're interested in having something that would give them more support. <laughs> so K through eight, but what so about what about high school? Yeah, I thought that was K through twelve. <clears throat> oh, it says K through yeah, eight. Yeah, it says yeah, yeah, does second, it? second yeah. bullet. Right. So typically in a high school, you have teachers. Um, the high school tends to work differently than the a middle school or elementary school. And in a middle school, it could go either way. There are some schools where if you have a lot of teachers um, who are able to collaborate or um, have had more of an opportunity to collaborate, they will design their own curriculum, usually under a curriculum coordinator, um, somebody with a master's degree in the field who will kind of lead the group. In this case, the district doesn't have that right now. So it's been challenging, um, I think, to come up with a solid plan for instruction. And what we need is something that will give teachers some of that structure in terms of what they're going to be teach, what teaching, when, what are their lessons going to look like? Because we need something stronger to support students as we try to recover from the losses of learning due to COVID. So this is kind of the timeline of the strategic plan, kind of mixing in with the ESSER two funds to say, well, what can we do to address the, the learning gaps that have have occurred over the past, you know, 18 months. 
Uh, I'm sorry, I have two questions. So, Joe, what was it? Wit and wisdom, and what was the other one? Expeditionary learning. E. It's E L. Okay. Um, and then my second question is: so, Alyssa, I'm, and I might be misunderstanding, but um, it sounds like Joe is is in the you know been involved in these conversations, and we have you know a, a, a middle school ELA teacher involved, but it doesn't sound unless I'm misunderstanding that Anne is involved. So if it's in her building, I think she Anne should, should be involved. involved. So, she so needs, that, that kind of just stuck involved. out to me. And I think that, I think that the Congress, the, the statement that you know there's no collaboration with the high school and stuff, but we still need to have the nine through twelve very seriously, obviously included in this entire yeah. overview of the curriculum. I mean, Anne is the lead. And yeah, um, you've mentioned buy-in several times, yeah. and I think we all know that when people put their own sweat and tears into something, it means more. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the fact that you're recognizing it. I have four middle school teachers who teach ELA. We did expand the ELA time to a period and a half. It is a very um, heavy time period, and, and the teachers are using a lot of keys to literacy strategies. Mm -hmm. So we, we have made some improvements, but I, did, I didn't even know the names of either of these programs. So I appreciate yeah. this. Um, OK, so. So I think for us to be able to make a decision yeah. when we meet, if Anne and the high school can get involved and these two groups dig in to mm -hmm. these curriculum, I know I personally will feel more comfortable. I, I, I agree. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I, I like what I read um, and I'm generally supportive of what we read, but I mean, they're, they both principals need to be in, involved and Anne needs to be brought into this mm -hmm. yeah yep. um so cat can you kind of pull some of that all together for the you know by the 31st can you you know get with mrs free tag and kind of get some of the additional input that we're talking about yes i can bring it to bring some information to ann and i can also work with the ela plc at the middle high school okay um, and I'm not sure if that, that will necessarily happen by the 31st, but I will do the best I can. Okay. So that way we could try and at least get a timeline for a decision. If we could make a decision, I would say by mid-May, that would be ideal. Okay. All right. All right. That's that's fair. Mm -hmm. Anne, are you comfortable with that? I am. Sorry. That's, that's, all, that's, all, that's all right. All right. Kat, was there anything else that you want to throw in there? Uh, the only the only other thing I just wanted to bring up was the fact that I know that teachers are exhausted. Um, everybody's been working incredibly hard. We have work to do with regards to summer instruction and professional development. Teachers have traditionally been paid the $25 per hour uh, as a stipend for their summer work. And I'm wondering if the board would be willing to approve an increase even of $10 instead of 15 um but what can we do to recognize the work that teachers are doing throughout all of this uh, i think from my own personal opinion i think that's something that also needs to be discussed on the 31st because i do have a little bit of an issue with the uh, amount that was thrown in there and i think that that is something uh that we need to discuss in a workshop we also have a budget that we need exactly to follow I mean, that so well, well we have this we have the other monies too yeah, right this is grant but we don't want to be spending this right because it's yeah, right, right. I, I think i think that's all i yeah. think for me anyway it's all part of that bigger discussion for the workshop mm -hmm. yep jim yes i agree i think we need to okay mm -hmm. all right so uh, so let's do that on the 31st too, Kat. I, I know, I feel bad. I know you wanted at least one or two, <laughs> you know, one or two concretes. Um, there's just a lot that we need to go over with this. Right. Nope, understood. All right. Anything else? That is it. All right. Uh, did anyone have any questions for Kat on any of the stuff that we talked about? <laughs> Wait till the All right. So then let's thank you, Kat. Okay. So, thank you. So let's move on to the uh, technology report. Good evening. Yes, Jeff. How are you? 
Uh, you have my report before you. If you have any questions that uh, I can answer, I will do so. Does anyone have any questions for Deb? No? Write anything down. Okay. okay, looks like Deb's getting an easy night too. <laughs> thank you. I guess we are. All right, so thank you, Deb. All right, let's move on to principal's reports. And I guess we'll start off with Mrs. Freetag. Thank you, Chair. Um, you have my report. I've given you some of the internet data. And I made a note here, you know, in the past when we had to look at data in our groups with teachers, we tried to do some what they call root cause analysis. You've heard that term, like what is a real problem here? Mm -hmm. And I, the only thing I can come up with the top of my head all by myself was we were only in school for 13 and a half days in January and February. I think everybody recognizes that this has been hard. Um, my middle school students in particular, I've been to every single one of their advisories to give them my scare talk. I don't think they're really afraid of me, honestly, but I have said, you know, if you're failing two or three classes or your grades aren't good, now is the time. Go to homework club. And we're seeing, I think, more kids in homework club after school today. It was a nice day. We didn't see them, but we are seeing more kids show up and they are doing their work. I think they, that they just need to get back into the routine of we're here to learn. And, and I think teachers are excited that more kids are coming back. And that the negative side of that is now all of a sudden we have classes of 24 kids. So mm -hmm. we're still providing ancillary support. I, I think right now I'm only gonna have maybe one or two sixth graders who are continuing to be remote. So that class, wow. it's a large number of kids, mm -hmm. but the parents are saying, I want my kid back in school. Yeah. And I'm mm -hmm. saying, yeah, we want it too. Yeah. Right. That's so that's, that's really good. Um, a lot of parents, I think, are still under the impression that it's not a safe place. So when I call and talk to them on the phone and they'll say, well, what, do you, what, what is it really like? Come in, take a look around and see how clean it is. I mean, the facilities people are doing a great job taking care of the building and I, I'm very grateful for everybody's help. So that's my report. So, and I did get the email. Yes. So thank you. And what I really liked, I mean, I didn't really like that my kid needs to get email, but you know what I mean? Yes, but, but he but, did. He absolutely but, but, did. Uh, it's that time of year it, where I start it, looking it, at it. 100%. And yeah. what I really liked was the fact that the two classes he's having issues in, you copied those two teachers so that everybody is on the same page. We are talking to each yeah. other. Let, let me yep. assure you of that. Yep. So when a, when a teacher says to me, how can I help? And I said, yep. let me email the mom or dad. Yep. Let me call mom or dad. Yep. And, 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 and I and I <laughs> yeah. had the conversation at home, and I have been in contact with one of the teachers. And and, and I mean, I just mm -hmm. I kind of want to make a point of pointing that out because it wasn't just like the principals saying, "Hey, you know, your kid needs to look at." It was the classes that he's having the issue in. Those yeah, teachers were included, right. so there is a total team effort. It is a team effort, and now's the time to really make a difference. Yeah. I think. Yep. So um, you can see our remote numbers. I checked again today. We're down to about 17%. Mm -hmm. So it is it's slowly winning down. Does anyone have any questions for Ann? Okay. I have a question about the test scores and I have a question about the remote number. Sure. Um, so yeah, so the test scores, I did notice that, you know, you were saying how, um, you know, it was impacted, you know, the root cause and all that, but, and you know, and some have gone down, but you know how you have to follow that when you follow the same class and go diagonally. It actually there's several of them that actually are increasing their percentages. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. I mean, it's not it's not all bad news. It is not right. all bad it's news. Not all I think bad this, news. Is, yeah. this speaks to again. I think your foresight about why do we want pace? Why did we? Why do we think right. authentic assessment is better? Mm -hmm. Some of these kids spent ten minutes on the test. Some yep. of them spent an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So, does the test really mean anything to the student when they do it? Some of them, yes. Yeah. Some of them, they're bragging to each other. Hey, I only took ten minutes. You know, I can yeah. hear them when they come in the lunchroom. Yeah. So, yeah, if those kinds of assessments. Now, driver ed. If this was the driver education test, <laughs> they would do really well yep. on it. Pass yeah, rates are much higher. It means something to them. I mean, so, some of it is kids because I remember having these same discussions twelve years yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first yeah. got on the board. Okay, so. so all right, good. Yeah. No, and I have seen some of them. It's they literally are just waiting for it to for the elementary school like changes, and they know they can click. And it we've seen some of them like, oh, you should not be done yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And, yeah. and then my only question about remote numbers, and, and it's great that more people are coming back, but I remember when we were coming, discussing coming back in the summer into the fall, you know, that, and we never had like a real percentage because it all depends like what grades it is and whatever, and which kids that we kind of were like around the 20% and if it got too much lower. And so how is space really? Like I know those middle school classes, I know. The middle school classes, are, that's are why we're pulling. Um, so for instance, there's a sixth period class that we're gonna to have to take kids from one classroom and another classroom and put them in an empty room with the ancillary support teacher. So we're gonna, like for instance, um, Mr. Killy helps with ancillary support. They have a routine down. There's A day and B day. Mm -hmm. And those kids know it's my A day, I go with Mr. Killy. On my B day, I'll go with them, you know, so they know their routine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key to it is that you don't put all 25 kids in the room at once. Oh, yeah, because you can't. You can't. Right. Right. So we have, so that's, that's, it's, it's a moving target for us. And I anticipate come Monday when a lot of those sixth graders have returned because Friday is our B day. They won't have that sixth period class. Come Monday, we'll have the routine figured out. So. So, but there is space, is what you're saying. There are, there are rooms that we can use. It, it's yeah. a matter of making sure that the kids get into the routine. I'm going to go there today. Tomorrow, I'll be in with the teacher. But on this day, I'm with the remote person or the ancillary support person, excuse me. I mean, I understand what we were talking about. Only yeah. can come back at the quarter. And, and you know, and I know that they're coming back. But if, you, if the kid's struggling, especially why make, yeah, yeah, to make them wait no. a couple more weeks just because whatever, that doesn't say, oh, make sense. Back June 1st. No, no. Yeah, right. that doesn't make sense. Well, so and I, and if I you think, can make it work. And I think that's why we left that final dis, you know, decision up to the principals, yeah. was because, you know, just for this exact reason, it's so fluid. And if you're seeing students that should come back, it, I yeah. mean, you need to be able to say, come back. And, and ultimately, yeah. I think your, your taxpaying parents appreciate the quality of everything, the instruction that you have live, the care that we have for the building and we're trying to provide a good, happy climate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, as long as you can make it work, because I know that was one of our discussions when we were, we were coming back that we couldn't fit everybody in. So right. as long as we're able to figure it out. And no. yeah. And, and I have the nickname Nag Nag because that's all I do all day. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I know other teachers who definitely do that Nag -Nag. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions for Ann? No? All right, thank oh, you. Good, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bogio, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, answer any questions. And I was able to finally get all the Homeland Security stuff in there. Really remembered what the high school report had. It was very, very, very similar. It won't be a summer project, more, most likely. Yeah. Yeah, Just a point on that, too. The areas that we failed. Um, that report has to be submitted to the state by the beginning of September 1, 2021. Yeah, beginning of next semester. I mean, next season. Okay. Uh, would I be correct in assuming, Jim, that uh, facilities is going to be looking at a lot of this too and helping with? Well, we have already. Okay. Um, like Joe said, it's a, it's a summer thing. Really, the areas that we have to, uh, we have to create a plan basically and submit it. It's, okay. it's just a written plan, basically, right? Okay. Well, it's a written plan and it's also getting together with the police chief, the fire chief, mm -hmm. the emergency, uh, I can't remember his name, but I know Curtis 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 Curtis. town yeah. emergency management yep. supervisor or whatever. So we need to get those meetings going. We used to have uh, quite often uh, when Chief Faulkner was here, and, have the new chief we haven't really been able to get together on that but we need to do that i think as far as the state is concerned it's the sub submit submission of the of the written group, uh plan yeah. and then having it more individualized to the each school site questions for joe all right all right no questions then we'll move on to um the superintendent report and you have my report. Um, they probably, you probably know that there's there's a lot happening in the legislature right now. And I did outline the um, the bills that if there's always a Senate bill that deals with uh, education finance, and there's a House bill that deals with education finance, and eventually they uh, are brought together. And usually there's a compromise. Sometimes there's a committee of conference that's put together. To determine that compromise, but there will be a bill, and it will 
uh, be in law by the end of June, typically by the end of April, you've got a real good idea where we are. Uh, the good news, both of the both those bills would increase our state funds. So I think that's kind of what people are really looking at. And the governor again today said that there'll be more dollars from the state. Um, and of course, we know there's going to be much more from the federal government. So, um, however, the money from the federal government does have uh, an accounting structure that's onerous. Uh, every month, we have to report on every expenditure in each of the grants. We have three now. We're about to have a fourth. Uh, so the accounting side of all of that is, I mean, there's no free lunch, but if somebody gives you $890 or $57,000 of, you know, opportunity, uh, and we're, we're certainly going to do our best to take advantage of it. Anything we leave on the table goes into the state general fund, and there are other competing interests that will uh, use that very quickly. So we feel our kids and community deserve what we can put together for them. Yeah. Questions for Wayne? Um, my only question was, um, it says that there's supposed to be five pages. Is oh, there yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. only four. I mean, maybe five doesn't have anything. I'm not sure. It, no, it does, because there I was a headline and then yeah. no, nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just yeah, just didn't copy. So you know, what I mean, like we have a, a blank, but that's yeah. Oh, the rest of the. Do you know what oh, was on yeah. your just Yeah. So so the it's the technology goal uh, of which we are working hard to look at different uh, options uh, in regards to the technology expenditures that we're going to recommend next month out of the. $857,000 COVID, and Deb's got a long list, but we want to prioritize. We, we met on the list already, but um, couldn't come to agreement on what the priorities were. Uh, and but this next Wednesday, we're meeting again. So technology is a big part of, of that plan. We also have, unfortunately, as Deb mentioned, or uh, in her report, some cyber security issues. You know what happened yep. to Manad yep. or Swansea just yesterday. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we had the issue around ransomware, which yes. Debbie outlines yeah. in her report. So we need some PD for people uh, so that we don't end up in a worse place where people, you know, embed these things that show up three weeks later and then you get three weeks of going back and trying to figure out where, where your data is not compromised. So we've got some issues with with technology and then the facilities part uh, which we are we're making some progress and there's definitely going to be federal money at the end of the year uh, to take care of some of the issues uh, that'll be funneled through the state we already have a plan around cameras to make sure that all our areas are accessible and uh, audio so that anybody in any place in school hears an announcement or we make an announcement everybody hears it. we still have some issues there and we still and we had all of those all of those problem areas identified when I was still on facilities committee. Right. So, so, so that's we already know exactly what we need. It's ready to go. Yeah. We're going to be first in the queue the minute we get Perfect. get the word. Perfect. So it was technology and uh, and then personnel. Uh, we will need two board members for the business administrator um, hiring committee. So be thinking about that. And in April, we'd like to to get that committee together, small group, but two administrators or two board members, two community members. And then special, uh, when you're a special education director, there's two board members that need to be on that committee as well, based on your SAU policy manual. So you'll want to think of how we're going to manage that. There'll be a lot there to do in May and June, uh, maybe so April if we can get it going. Do you want us to be uh, deciding on those people in April? Yeah. Um, can we put that on the agenda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. And I have a copy of the manual so you know who else has to be. Oh, great. Okay, perfect. So I think the only thing that will cut off my report were the personnel, technology, and the facilities part. Okay. Sure. Thank you. I had questions about the bills. <laughs> so the, let's see, which one? House Bill 110. So that's only gone through the House and not the Senate, I'm assuming? Correct. But some of these are very much uh, that's emerging the... in the same sort of language. Uh, both the House and the Senate have the same uh, tenor relative to the way they're approaching education. Their, their freedom account bills are very similar. 
Uh, the bill that's likely to go, I don't think the freedom account's going to go, but I do think the bill around open enrollment, which we were on the, you know, Holly chair of that committee not long ago, uh, it won't be an option <laughs> in regards <laughs> to uh, going forward if that passes and it would start fall of 2021. Now, I don't think they can just open it and without us having the ability to create some criteria and say, right. you know what, we just don't, can't accommodate uh, you this year. We already have 25 kids in the fifth grade in, yeah. in each class and we can't, you know, but right now we wouldn't have that um, ability to veto or, oh, good. yeah. <laughs> and then the money from the state would follow the kids. And uh, what would, if the money for education went to the town, that would really change the way things happen. So that hasn't gone through the Senate the House right. bill, did pass by a substantial I, margin. Yeah. And I do believe that might get through the Senate. Uh, and I don't, I'd have to ask uh, Tom what that would mean to us, but I, I mean, the town keeps our funds. We yep. draw from those yep. funds. Yep. So it's just a matter of who does the work. I don't think the towns want this. No, that's like our whole, the whole SAU. <laughs> purpose is kind of about so i think money. somebody called you know a rep and, and really got them fired up because they felt that a school board squandered money that they believed should have been in the unencumbered and should have right. been left they should have sent yeah. it at back. the end of the year and gone back to and we've done a good job of doing yeah. it right we've yeah. always sent a lot back yeah. yeah so it was not a we're not the group that got this whole thing right yeah, that was just Not interesting. <laughs> that wasn't us. Wasn't okay. me. Uh, did you have anything else? else? Um, no, that was really it. All right. Questions for Wayne? No, we're all good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Wayne. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's uh, go through these committee reports. Uh, personnel. Um, nope. Nothing new. Nothing. Health and wellness. Uh, we have not had a meeting. It will be March 22nd. Oh, that's great. Uh, town 20 budget. Second. Twenty second. Um, um, nothing new for budget. All right, staff nope. development. Nope, nothing. We're all out for the year. Nothing. <laughs> Legislation, NHSBA. Uh, just as Wayne has said, keep an eye on, on the state bills. legislature. So, so. All right, emergency management. Nothing. All right, uh, Wyndham Career Center. Nothing. I think they are cutting classes for are the same budgetary reasons. They're realizing that some of them are not, you know, worth having. Okay. You know, they're making cuts mm -hmm. in the program next year. Um, all right, uh, HASP, uh, we did not meet. Uh, selectmen, uh, so I have been uh, been able to make it to some selectmen meetings. Uh, not this last one, the one before. Uh, Catherine has put out a lot of uh, feelers for funds for the electronic sign. Um, Jill was able to look at some of the uh, funds that weren't used in some of the parks and rec budgets at the community event, events line. Um, and since we didn't have anything last year, there was some extra money there. So the town uh, stuck and voted to uh, give us $2,000 for the sign. Um, so we should probably you know, send a thank you or something yeah. for them. I have a meeting on the 23rd with another group that Catherine contacted. Um, and there's the potential uh for a donation for a large portion of the remainder and i will let you know as soon as uh that vote is had um and we can go from there so i, I know we're meeting with Great. on that item on the first uh, item on the facilities meeting on the 26th yeah yes i will know by then and That's i will be able great. to what i'll probably do is i'll probably send you the information maybe ann can send it out to yeah. everybody once i know what's happening oh, these seniors didn't mention it but one of their ideas for the class gift was to help support that as okay well. so great everybody's excited so we may oh, wow. yeah, we may yeah. end up with look more, at all this collaboration right. <laughs> so um yeah so that's that's the that's the big good news um all right facilities well uh like you said the sign the digital signage is a big big thing um certainly i think catherine's vision timeline was much more expedited than what i think the district had in mind yeah. so we talked about that a little bit uh the meeting is 26 they're going to be on the representatives of the company i don't know if you guys saw that but that is a visual of what it might oh, look wow. like. Cool. Yeah. 
Oh, that is fun. Yeah. So you probably saw that. Yeah. So that's kind of that. Yeah. 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 Oh, so you would use sort of like the existing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's oh, not like neat. a complete read of which it's just set up digital yeah. for you. So that, right? I did, yeah. Yeah. I like that it still uses yeah. the. Yeah, I didn't so envision stuff. that. I envisioned like a little box. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's actually yeah. kind of like the, uh, the shipping thing. Yeah. But it, it kind of maintains what the I got an email on this. Yeah, I like that. Awesome. And that's what I expected. Oh, yeah, I was envisioning your office. So that's very exciting. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like a box. Yeah, that's way for a year. Um, another minor point that some of you haven't covered is that the hydro rebates continue to come in. Uh, our last deposit was on 119, we got a thousand seventy three. Yeah. So far in the fiscal year, we've got 20, a little over 2300. Oh, so nice. Tom's going to make sure that before he departs that we're maintaining that paperwork. Okay. That's it. All righty. Uh, community connections. So we haven't really had a whole lot going on. Kayla and I, uh, and we haven't talked in any at any depth uh, about this, but uh, we were recognizing, you know, that we haven't done a forum. Hard to do a forum, you know, obviously right now, but we could certainly do one online. So we're kind of trying to figure out how that might work. So we could ask, you know, the board if that's something that we want to do. Um, one thing that I was thinking of either today or yesterday is. Um, I'm wondering how we all feel about um, using the Community Connection Facebook page to take a poll to see what subject matters the people might want a forum on. Yeah. That, you know, I, I, well, I will admit that at the moment, I've just been so busy with work that I don't really know what a lot of the issues are okay. people may have out there. So I would like to do some poll to say, if you were to have an online forum, mm -hmm what subject matter might you want and, and we can, the other thing we can do is we can send through school messenger oh, a yep. survey yep. Mm -hmm. which would hit more parents i think than yep. the connections yep. Yep. i think it might be good to do it through the facebook group first because then it would narrow right. down maybe and give oh, us some choices because don't because on the if school you messenger can do it, you can you can I don't, I, it's been a little while but you can have different questions or you can ask one question and give i think Things. Yeah, but 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 we but we can't say you know what topic do you want and they can't answer. Right. But if but if we try oh, to if, but yeah. if we get some topics yeah. Yeah. in line and then use that, yeah. 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 I mean, so yeah, so that be, can be step one, and then yes, step two can be exactly. messenger, right? Mm -hmm. And then that, and then refine it. Yep, and then maybe if we can do that kind of soon, maybe by April we'll have an idea yeah. and we can bring it to the board and right. start actually like planning. Yeah. So normally we obviously we, we you know turn the comment thing off. So this would obviously be, we're going to be asking for comments. Yeah. So I just want to make sure everyone's okay with that, just so we yeah. can get an idea of what people may, you know, may have on their minds that they want to talk to us about. Yeah, I'm okay. And I'll obviously make sure that I have notifications turned on, so when anyone. Yeah, we have those words right. like right. with block. Yeah, oh, yeah, we have. But I'll just have right. every notification. So when right. anyone writes right. on it, through. we'll be okay. notified and we can just kind of make sure it stays district appropriate. Right. Right. Would you yeah, have that's, availability that's my, like, to? Concern is that we make sure yeah, that, that, it, that, it's that it's appropriate. That's appropriate. That's that's that it's appropriate yeah. that people may take the opportunity. Oh, I can make comments now. Right. And, right. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. won't be very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Would you have availability to figure out that generic? questioning post yeah and then i i think we should kind of have a set time limit on it because yes. i don't want to have to be glued to my phone Correct. non-stop for sure an endless amount of time yeah. um so i think we can kind of get that together and then figure yeah. out the best time and give okay. it i'll put in the post that there is a you know this will close yeah this yeah, whatever date. Yeah. yeah all right perfect yeah and yes, then i'll be able to turn it off and not have to worry about it all right, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Um, so behavioral support. Uh, we meet again April 14th. All right. And joint loss. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. All right. So then we're at citizens' comments. Can we start Bob? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Teresa, do you have anything? I'm all set. Thank you very much. Megan?
I'm all set. Thanks, guys. Patty. All set. Thank you. John. I'm all set. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Karen Thompson. I'm all set. Thank you very much. You're welcome. iPad Pro. <laughs> April Anderson. I think I see with April. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. I just had a question because I had read an article and I you know, post a poster about it, um, about the lunch, free and reduced lunch applications and yep. then and the school not getting, schools not getting their normal amount of them because of the COVID situation and free lunch. Everybody's getting free lunch so nobody feels like they need to fill it out. Yep. Um, I know that the state is working on um, using last year's numbers versus instead of this year's numbers kind of thing to to determine our monies that we'll get mm -hmm. i just mm -hmm. didn't know if you'd heard anything more about that or what our numbers were like as far as applications Wayne, do you want to so so we, we did post our numbers and we were we've de we're definitely down but the state uh thanks to jay khan who sponsored the bill in the senate uh does have uh, legislation that seems to be broadly supported uh, that would allow us to go back to uh, the fall of 2020 or the fall of 2019. Uh, looks like uh, we would pick the fall of 2019 because that yeah. seems to be the, the better for us. Uh, <laughs> but we still have the hurdle of making sure that in the fall of 2021, we don't have uh, people continuing on. Now, there were a number of uh, there were a number of variances that were set just a couple of days ago from the federal government that allow um, many of the same kind of emergency contingencies to continue with free reduced lunch uh, and possibly through the summer. So we, we may not be in the fall in the same world that we're in, in which case we may have that hurdle. Uh, and I, I wouldn't want to have to, I'm sure the bill that Jay has sponsored is only dealing with the current <laughs> shortfall. So we still have an issue, but it's not, it won't impact the budget uh, that we're looking at right now. Can I say one thing? Oh, um, Deb in her report has the numbers, and I don't know if it was Tom in his, um, or if I just had it down, the, the, the amount for student, but it, you know, it, we're, we're down like 30, to it looks like kids. So I mean, I don't think we're in as dire straits as some of these bigger districts that are like gonna be out like hundred thousand dollars, you know, it's probably like, you know, 25, 50, 40,000 or something, which is so awful. But and, and if if we and it's a moving target. So if we keep getting more people signed up, it'll, you know, reduce how how bad. But it's in a percentage though, right? What? Yeah. It's the percentage of students is like the main. Yeah, but it's also, you know, it's so many students and you multiply it by how much you get free. So that's, so that's the numbers that we lose. You know what I mean? We're going to be lost from last year. So you can look at both ways. Yeah. The, the, the Senate bill, which deals with adequacy, adds about $2,500 to the money we currently get for free reduced lunch per student. So that language doesn't tie to the bill that would allow us to recoup. Uh, they called it a home, hold harmless provision. So we still have an incentive to get parents to sign up yeah. for reduced lunch. Yeah. Just yeah. our circumstances aren't as dire as uh, as many districts as Holly pointed. Yeah, out. if none of the bills pass, we still won't be at. Well, it'll be bad, but you know we'll lose money, but not like no, this not catastrophic. Strong, not catastrophic like some of the big bigger schools. Yeah. All right, April. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you very much. Leslie. I'm all set. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Kat, Tom, I'm good. Thank you. All set. Thanks. All right. And did we have a non-public? Yep. All right. So I need a motion to go into non-public. I like that motion. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call. Yes. 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 All right. Who do we need? Uh, Joe, 